There we go. Cheers. Cheers. Oh That's man. Goodness. Yummy goodness. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start recording in three, two. Hey, uh, welcome to the Uncount Sewer channel. I'm Drew. My name's Matt. Thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. We uh, we just logged in and uh, started this conversation, so let's roll it up from here. Well, before we start, let me wish Drew a very, very happy 50th birthday today. 50? I'm not that yeah. old. I think you are. Uh, I have, I've hit 49. <laughs> I hit 49 today. Next year, I will hit 49 again because I will not go to 50. I'll, I'll stop right there at 49. Oh, uh, 50 is not so bad. It is a good one. That's so, not a bad deal. Uh, be, so, before we, hit re before we hit the record button, we were just having a, a discussion about uh, growing up and, and what mom would do for our birthday meal. And, and I was going to bring up... Um, she would probably ask you what was your favorite meal and what what did you want her to fix that night so drew if you had to answer what, what would be your favorite meal for your birthday who that's a that's a it is a good question i kind of laugh about it now because the conversation came up a couple of days ago in my house when my wife said what do you want for your birthday dinner uh i just drew a blank i thought um i don't know um uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't recall, so I fired back at Matt. I, what was our birthday dinners? We might go out for dinner. We might choose something like a, a, a fine dining kind of place. Um, in uh, Fort Wayne, that might have been like uh, Casas or... Uh, I, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. And then even okay, home well, cooked. Yeah, I was going to say. Let's go back even further before they really started taking us out. Because we didn't go out to eat a lot. No. I mean. No, I I think our going out to out for a meal was the McDonald's after church right across from Gospel Temple, and mm -hmm. man, that happened once a month. That didn't happen frequently. It was maybe once every three months. Uh, I'm not going to say it, but would you like to talk about your mother's experience at McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we we laugh about that. No, well, we laughed about it actually on her birthday a couple couple of days ago when we were out. Uh, I, I think it grew over the years from two Big Macs and three French fries to four Big Macs and four <laughs> French fries. But I think that the uh, the fact remains that whatever happened that year, that week, it uh, it shook our world as kids. <laughs> uh, we got we got sidetracked on that. So I don't know yeah. what what would have a home cooked meal have been. Well, uh, a few of my favorite would have been. Mom's homemade lasagna. Mm. Um, yep. And <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I ever picked this as a favorite, but. Uh, but Better be careful because she's going to watch this. You know that. I, I know she is, but I, oh, I don't care. I think one of my favorites was probably goulash, believe it or not. Mm. Uh, Mom makes yep. a, you know, Johnny Marzetti kind of, um, it's not traditional goulash by any means, but it's. Uh, it's uh, pr probably one of my favorites. Um, I, I don't know. We destroyed a lot of food as kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did. I think that uh, she and many other people joked about it being like feeding an army. Three growing boys, and she'd fix two pans of that lasagna or a 12-pound roast that never had leftovers. I mean, you think about how she fixed a meal for us, and mm -hmm. it was. it. We yeah. would devastate some stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I'm just thinking back about dinners and stuff. I, I don't remember fighting over food so much because um, there was always enough, but there wasn't much leftovers. And today when I, we sit down at the table, I, I make a lot of food for my family, but I expect some leftovers uh, just so I can have lunch the next day or Kendra can take lunch to work the next yep. day. Um, and, you know, the older... <clears throat> the older Keaton gets, the more he's eating and he's working out every day. And so he eats four times a day. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm, that, I don't mind that, but yeah, he yeah. eats the leftovers before we get a chance to eat them. So uh, anyways, that's yeah. just a trip down memory lane for us. Happy birthday, Drew. I'm, I'm really, I'm excited about thank, today. <laughs> thank you. 
<laughs> I uh, I will continue to on even on screen I have a diet coke in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. It may not That's be in a can. You can just <laughs> That's about your favorite drink, might, right? <laughs> might be something else in there, but yeah. So uh, this week in music, what was it like for you? This week, I kind of just stuck to to woman child and didn't uh, didn't get out too far um, beyond that. What What about you? What What was your thoughts? I got into a little bit more of the the influences, <clears throat> just like you said. Listen, uh, listen to it once, once through, and you kind of get a feel for what the album is. You've yeah. got that slide show up, so I'm gonna <laughs> I do it on yeah. screen here. Um, yeah. She's got so many other accomplishments, so many people that she's played with, so many albums that she's put down. Uh, Woman Child was in 2013. That was the second album. Uh, the next next album, 2015, for One to Love, was the best uh, jazz vocal album. Got a Grammy for that. Um, because, just like you said, I was able to dig a little bit deeper listen to the album once and then start to ask who she played with. Um, uh, what is she known for? Who is she known for? Uh, I started to ask the question, who was she influenced by? Uh, and as a vocal jazz singer, uh, growing up, it was Sarah Vaughn that she was influenced by, uh, yeah. which led me to listen to a little bit of Sarah Vaughn. Okay. She was influenced by Billie Holiday. I think regardless of being into the jazz music or not, most people have heard that name. Mm -hmm. uh, Bessie Smith and Betty Carter. Uh, so I, I wanted to understand who Cecile really was. So I, for me, the rabbit hole became who she is, who she, she was influenced by. Uh, and that influence provides some, uh, some foresight into... Um, how her style, how her sound, how her tone might come through. Uh, and then reading up on it at five years old, she was, a, uh, learned a classic piano eight yeah. years old. She was singing. Those are the things that I started to pick up on this week, listening to her album. Um, and then I started to pick up, uh, I, I wrote down in my notes from then the songs that I like the best and then even this morning and last night listening to the album again, I went back and kind of evaluated which songs that I appreciate the most. This particular album, listening to it now, really stands out to me as something a little bit different. So I appreciated the album more today than I did probably uh, nine months ago, ten months ago, a year ago when we listened to it. So I, I have to say it was... It was really a pretty cool album. Uh, I would agree. I, I'd agree a hundred percent that um, first time through for me, not ten months ago, probably didn't hit as hard. Did Did you have any favorite songs on the album that that you know, really would have stood out to you? Let's put it this way: I, I couldn't get past number five, "La Franc Caché sur Te Genou." <laughs> Um, that was that was the only one that I kind of disliked, uh, and I don't even know why I disliked it. Whether it was because I didn't understand the lyrics, you know. You know, the funny part is I was just reading this on the wiki page. Uh, um, her father is a Haitian and her mother is French, so she's got a lot of uh, a background in her own life to to come. It was in French, so. But she you know. didn't. But I did. I, yeah, it was interesting because I looked at at something back then. She listened to all kinds of music coming up, and mm -hmm. that Haitian, yeah, uh, hit me, which made me wonder why. And that's when I found the same information you did: hip hop, soul, classical, and classical jazz. Mm -hmm. Made me wonder what's classical jazz in their definition. Gospel and Cuban, and plus many more is I think what they indicated on it. So I, I have in French and Haitian, I'm going to guess that multiple language singing in French was kind of comfortable to her, but no doubt. Yep, for sure. The um, yeah. uh, overall, had uh, when I looked at this, the Sarah Vaughan, uh, Billie Holiday, and Betty Carter, I've heard the name Betty Carter many a times from some of the jazz musicians that I've 
hung out with recently. Uh, did you listen to any other female vocal jazz musicians that she had been influenced by in that week or in uh, in the the recent times? Uh, I I did not no because again uh, I hate to say it that vocal you know vocal jazz it just doesn't resonate with me very well so getting getting down the rabbit hole uh, for me. <laughs> On, on this artist, this time, okay, and I'm going back 10 months the first time I did it. I, we didn't, we, I didn't rabbit hole too much. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I just kind of appreciated what she was presenting um, as for what it was. Yeah. Um, and I, on, on my little slideshow that I was showing earlier, uh, she is, she has toured with the, Jink, uh, with the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, <laughs> which is run, run, <laughs> Run by my man Wenton, uh, and and Wynton, oh, went to Marsalis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to get there. Uh, but Marsalis put a quote um, that was on the wiki page that I just copied <clears throat> for my slideshow. He said, "You get a singer like this once in a generation or two. So, yeah, you know that quote from a hero of mine again makes me appreciate." Uh, Cecile even a little bit more than I than I probably would have just on my own you know getting getting praise from from someone like Wynton Marsalis who <clears throat> oh, I, I can't wait to get to his week <laughs> Let's just put it that way. well that, that week I'll have to say that was the week that jazz was ruined for me <laughs> it just ruined it, not jazz my life was ruined because of that week yeah. we, we'll get to that in time yeah. i've used yeah. that statement yeah. a lot about it but yeah. uh she also had won didn't she win on your slide an award mm -hmm. from the thelonious monk yeah uh music yeah and i, I don't remember there. i don't have it in my notes what year that was uh, but that that really hit me pretty hard when you've got uh, mm -hmm. somebody who puts themselves into um, I guess yeah, we again, should have talked about that beforehand, but yeah, that's all right. Uh, we're just, we're learning as we go here, so oh I'm, yeah, we are not hit transition. And yeah. There you go. Yeah, uh, the awards, uh, 2014, Thelonious Monk International Jazz Competition, and then uh, downbeat uh, uh, album of the album of the year for, for woman, woman child, child in 2014. In 2014, yep. yeah. So definitely, definitely one of those that. Uh, should stand out to us um, as the the greatness of things are. Um, when I realized that she had won that award, I had to dig into who she really was. And I, I did end up listening to multiple albums of hers. Uh, and the one that stuck out to me was The Window from 2018. That became one of my favorite albums. I, I don't know that I can tell you exactly why it stood out to me, probably the songs probably the earthy tones probably the vocal jazz that that was there as one of my favorite uh and that is a it's a good note to remind both myself and you and everybody when we come into this week after week after week it really is about just the one album uh listen to it one time give us a rating uh, maybe second or third time just to really hear the songs and where it's going. Uh, in the process of that is how we kind of started to rabbit hole. Who are they? Did they win awards? Uh, are the Grammy winners? Oh my goodness. Did you see that Winton commented on her? And because Winton Marsalis is talking about her, maybe we should. And that's where we're, that's kind of where we're going as far as our conversations go, how they, how they interweave with, with other artists and and who played with who and um, you know who, who commented on who and that's that's yeah. what you're getting at right it it is you start to backfill on that information and you realize that how we how we got here was let's listen to one album a week and, and let's rate it did you like it did you not do you care for vocal jazz do you not care for and a, and a simple rating is where it started and then you start to piece together how many people have played together. Shabaka in his drive for the past and making a change for the future. What's it going to look like? Kamazi and the changing of the guard. Uh, 
these, uh, I think that uh, it was Wayne Shorter who had said, or no, I'm sorry, it was Dizzy Gillespie. I was just a prophet of my time. Mm -hmm. I brought the music forward, and there will be those who come after me. And and I think about Winton. I think about Kamazi. I think about Shabaka. Uh, there are those who have come before, and there will be those who come after. And and this week kind of shook me a little bit for Cecile. Vocal jazz was not big for me either. However, uh, her voice, the use of her range, uh, the slurs, mm -hmm. the tone, and the pitch all began to make me wonder, am I missing something here? Uh, so for me, it was a pretty, pretty fun week to listen to music. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you think it's right that she's number 97? Do you think she should have been rated a little bit higher? Or not rated. I'm sorry. Let me let me put this a different way. She she's at number 97 in the magazine. Do you think she should have been <laughs> in top 50? Uh Matt, I dude, that's a good question to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I don't know. Uh mm -hmm. we that's a hard one to answer because of where we are. Uh, just uh, drop of the hat, we're on 57. We've come a long way since this album. And so I would say, uh, I, I pause. I, I know that I shouldn't leave a blank screen and just stare into wilderness. I don't know. I, I think this was a good spot. I, I really do. I would say yeah. the 97 was a good spot for it. Yeah. Kamazi, I would have put higher uh, by far, but I think this was a pretty good spot. Uh, this, this to me, I would have never, never have given her a listen. So nope. what about you? Was 90, 97 a good spot? Well, um, I think, I think it's decent. Yeah. I, I think it's probably right where it should be. And, and I think I said this last week when we talked about Kamazi, I, I'm glad it was, I'm glad Kamazi was 98 because that meant I got to experience him for longer. Yeah, boy. And again, we, we don't know what we don't know right now, just based on the journey that we're on. <clears throat> and, and <clears throat> I think uh, Cecile being at number 97 puts her in a good spot where I'm going to, yeah expand my horizon a little bit and listen to a little more vocal jazz. I mean, we know what's coming up. Yeah. And and if you're following us on our channel, you know, again, I think Drew mentioned this in the in one of the first videos, don't look ahead. It, it kind of ruins it. Um, you know, if, if you get ahead, uh, ahead of us, uh, um, you know, it may, may ruin the experience uh, listening to us jabber on. Um, but that's that's the way we do it. We don't look ahead. We don't we don't scroll through the magazine and say, "Oh, let's listen to twenty five this week. Let's listen to album number ten this week." We're going in order, um, and so that on our journey, we're learning uh, much about our our listening taste. So, again, just because this isn't our taste, uh, vocal jazz isn't our isn't our jam, doesn't mean that we won't go back uh, and listen to it again. <clears throat> but I think ninety seven is a good spot for Cecile. In time, I think that we have found that there's a reason why 100 through 1 is in the order that they're in. Um, when, when we get into more recent weeks uh, or the middle of the magazine, and I said it last week, I can't believe that there's 98 more albums that are better than this one. I think that there's something to be said about what happens in the weeks to come as we listen to those albums. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And I can get so absorbed into the sprint each week. How much data can I get? Can you can you plug me in like the Matrix and just feed me the information? That way I automatically know it. The trade-off is the experience is not gained. Yeah. And I, I think that's huge. So Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, we laugh about that Matrix quote a, a lot uh on our conversations and and uh, I wouldn't want to be plugged in. I would, I would want to experience this uh, kind of just like we're doing, uh, just like we're doing it. Because, you know, 
it, it's the it's the journey, not the destination per se. Because yeah. honestly, with this journey, there is no final destination. We're going to be listening to jazz for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with enthusiasm, I <laughs> I I had picked up uh, my Jazzwise magazine again last night, and I thought I'm going to flip through one of the new artists or featured artists and listen to to that song of current stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of years of brilliant jazz music exists from mm -hmm. past, present, and even into the future. I'll never get caught up. Okay. So let me ask you this while we're talking on that subject. Um, let's think back to nine months ago when we started or 10 months ago. If I would have asked you, do you have a favorite jazz artist? Who, who would you have said was your favorite? Wow, you got to go there, huh? Mm -hmm. As we came into this, mm -hmm. as we came into it, who would you say I, was your favorite? I I have to I have to stare at the camera dead. I, I don't know. Well, I can I, tell you. One, well, I can tell you one of your favorites. Well, okay. Trombone Shorty, right? Okay, so yeah. Yep, I'm thinking about my earlier years if I've ever played in trombone shorty would have been it. Yeah. Okay. Um I think that there was a uh, uh admiration and at the time a love for even Louis Armstrong. Um I've been down to Algiers Point. We've spent a lot of time with family in the New Orleans area and so seeing his statues and understanding that he brings brought a lot of music to New Orleans, uh, the New Orleans sounds really start to strike. And so, yeah, trombone shorty would have been one of those that really hit me pretty hard on that. I, I wouldn't have thought much about Wynton Marsalis. Wouldn't have thought about many others, but, uh, e even recently, uh, being able to see trombone shorty, uh, here at the Moody center in, in Austin for, uh, Austin city limits. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was the, the new breed brass band that opened for him. Shoot, I'd take another hour of that, please. <laughs> Those guys killed it. So yeah, plus, I, plus the two hours of trombone shorty. So man, that was <laughs> <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. That okay? So yeah, you you did bring that to mind. Uh, I remember them playing at the Austin City Festival or Austin City Limits Festival several years ago, and trombone shorty come out. Uh, his first song, Lily still laughs at me today about it. He's, he opened up pretty hard. And that the first couple of songs, I was in tears just sitting there, just mm -hmm. enjoying his sound. So yeah, <laughs> trombone shorty yeah, would be, would have been it. I was okay. going back to earlier years and I was thinking the only yeah. real jazz I knew was somebody like, uh, uh, uh Chuck Mangione. Chuck, uh, okay. Yeah. And some other things, Ken, but Ken, Kenny G. <laughs> Kenny G. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's a household laugh. name, whether, yeah, household name. whether you care for the soprano sax or not. Bringing jazz to the masses, yeah, right? He was bringing jazz. So uh, no, in the most recent years, uh, the Zydeco music out of new Orleans, the trombone shorty sound. Yeah. That would have been, what about, what about you? Well, oh. okay. Wait, let, let me ask you about one more artist and I'll, what about Roy Hargrove? Was, was he, is he journey driven right now or was he, prior to us starting this did you know about roy i i think it was timing wise pretty close um so i i go back to the beginning of this journey for you and i lily's mm -hmm. interest in jazz music her going to that first year that she had the opportunity to go to texas jazz and blues camp mm -hmm. uh that week really started to open up my mind to what jazz music is um as a commitment as a father, I kind of made a personal decision that I would go into playing an instrument. If I could help encourage her in her journey in music, I want to do anything and everything that I can to encourage my daughter in music. If anything else, she got a great opportunity to laugh at me for, for failing. Um, and I, I, I want to bring this up now because it, it has shaped who I am. I mentioned it in my bio, I mentioned it before. I would not play the trumpet because you were brilliant. 
Uh, you were a phenomenal trumpet player. I'm going to put you on screen so that you can kind of see that reaction. But you you were a brilliant trumpet player. Uh, I listened to many things that you played from uh, recitals or state competitions, playing in churches, uh, being accompanied by Judy Martin. Oh. Holy crap. Uh, the stuff that you could play was phenomenal to me. And as a kid growing up, I was never, ever going to play the trumpet. Uh, you've put it down after military, uh, and so the tenor sax is a B-flat instrument. For mm -hmm. any of y'all that want to understand that, don't try to understand it. It'll it'll screw your brain up. It still screws mine up. But it's B-flat instrument. Out Rick, go check out Rick Beato's channel if you want. The <laughs> ASO7. <laughs> the ASO7. He'll talk about it for you. Um, and so I, I picked up the, the trumpet, and I actually bought a flugelhorn online. Uh, instead of a trumpet, I picked up a more mellower sounding horn. And so I decided that I would try to learn that just to encourage her. In the process is how I came across Roy Hargrove. And so that year, just listening to some of his music and the RH uh, factor, uh, checking out what he, what he was doing, I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I listened to Chet Baker, put on some Miles Davis, uh, but that was my introduction to jazz music, the Texas Jazz and Blues Camp by the New School of Music Austin. So I started to dabble in, in those trumpet players. Uh, what do I have to do? Where am I going to go? What's a trumpet player sound like? So I, Roy Hargrove hit me then. Uh, yeah. and, and so did Chet Baker, Miles Davis. Uh, you know, you think about the legends of trumpet players. So Roy came in right at the very beginning. And then you sent me uh, Ibrahim Malouf, mm -hmm. which just reminded me that I will never be that good. Yeah, well, uh, we talked about Ibrahim a little bit um, last week, I think it was, or maybe yeah. maybe it was 99, um, his influence that, yep. that he's had on us for sure, um, and, and just how good he is, I mean, period. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about jazz vocal not being our jam. It, let me ask you this: Just staying on the same line of conversation, if you would, have, if you could pick your favorite style of jazz music, what would it be? And, and are you? I'm going to ask you the same thing, though. So I'll go back to it now because that's an interesting question. Where we are today on the fifth of February, mm -hmm. when we began this journey, March of last year, then. I would have said I'm into that hard bop sound of Dizzy. Okay. I really love the way that that his sound or Charlie Parker or um, uh, Coltrane drives mm -hmm. those melodies. The the fast, the furious, but I was a heavy metal kid too, and I love Sons of Kemet. Uh, <laughs> today, that's changed, and the wall of sound from Evans, uh, Kenton, the big band sounds, even where we're at with Basie today. Sorry, we just spoiled an alert yeah, we three particular uh, artists, but we are a few weeks ahead, a few months ahead of where we're at. So today, uh, I have a love for that hard bop sound. Uh, yeah. Clifford Brown, I, I think, has become somebody that I, I do kind of idolize uh, now a little bit more than ever before. His sound, his perfection, his clean tone. But with that said, I love the big band sound. Mm -hmm. w yeah. What about you? Okay, well, um, <clears throat> you know, Chuck Mangione was a big influence on me. I saw him in concert when I was younger, uh, learning the instrument. Um, and, you know, the, the con concert was amazing. Um he came out afterwards and signed autographs, and of course I got his autograph. So that was it was cool just to, I guess, be in his presence. He he was, um, he was influential. Um, you know, when I when I joined the military, I won't go into the whole story how I ran into this artist, but <clears throat> one of my friends told me to check out Pat Metheny, and the, um, uh, I got to tell you his his style and his sound are are top notch for me they're there if i'm gonna listen to what i want to listen to in jazz it's gonna be pat metheny um 
you know, I, I've seen Pat twice in concert here in, in Fort Wayne um, and loved every minute of it. I mean, so he, he was a big influence. Um, I didn't listen to much Kenny G. Um, believe it or not, though, Roy Hargrove, I have his very first CD that he put out because he was a trumpet player. I wanted to listen to him. But it was funny because after that, I didn't didn't really follow Roy uh, after that first CD. I'll grab that CD sometime in the future and have that so I can put it on screen. But <clears throat> I think I wore that CD out listening to it just because of his uh, just because of his talent on the tr on the trumpet. Um, I, <clears throat> I got to say, nine months ago, um, if you'd asked me my thoughts on Miles Davis, uh, I, I probably would have told you he's not the greatest trumpet player and don't I don't really care for miles we'll we'll get into miles I, I'm sure we will in the coming weeks um, but yeah he was never really an influence on me so I, I didn't listen to a lot of miles I, I've had conversations with other uh, jazz listeners who you know think miles is the bee's knees but whatever I, I mean I don't but I don't right now. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I I had a Winton album, um, but it was his uh, classical work, and I I have that album memorized. Um, so Winton, you know, I, I knew Winton played jazz, but I didn't go on to the jazz side of Winton too much. Um, I was I was stuck on that on that uh, symphonic uh, concert which, band. Which style. album? was that that you were stuck on go ahead and mention it because somebody's <laughs> going to listen to it this week and blow their mind uh it's called carnival yeah boy uh, Wenton marcellus and, and the album is called carnival and if you if you know Wenton on the jazz side and you don't know much about Wenton on the classical side that would be the album to put on even if you don't like classical music uh and you're a Wenton fan put yeah. on carnival and i promise you it will it will change the way you think about Wynton Marcellus. Um, so that that was that was that was that was my go-to list. And, and I would say, as far as the second part of the question, what style of jazz I like, um, you know, the the fusion jazz of Pat Metheny would be probably my number one go-to. Um, uh, even to even today, knowing what I know, it's still the fusion jazz with the uh, kind of synth. Um, backgrounds and again if if you've never heard Pat Metheny I'm sure you've heard Pat Metheny <laughs> even if you don't think you have heard him you've heard him I'm probably you've heard sure. him yeah. um, so th that's still my kind of go-to the the big band swing band holy Moses I mean <laughs> it, it, <laughs> well I it's hard to rate a favorite when they're like you know when yeah when, when, when if and I I think when we get to this week's conversation in the future yeah uh the mm -hmm. music that we're listening to brings a lot of that as well oh, yeah. but oh yeah here's here's what i don't want our channel to be like you ready tonight on lee night jazz you're gonna hear pat metheny and we hope you enjoy it late night jazz <laughs> uh, that's what i don't want i want I, you to hear his laugh i want you to hear his cry i want you to hear how excited we are on our jazz journey so, so those backstories are are kind of interesting to talk about and i hope they're interesting to listen yeah to, uh, oh yeah to for sure but you get a, a sense of where we're coming from and how you know we can rate things uh, based on our taste and and what but um, it, anyways i'll tell you what i'll we've, hey yeah we've uh, I'll, I'll save that Tonight on Unconnoisseur, we bring you number 94. I'll, I'll wait until we get to that album to do that, if I remember that this week. Today, we're going to be listening to this particular artist and his album called Water. Please enjoy yourself. <laughs> 94 will be the, the bees knees right there, yeah, baby. That, that would be a good one. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, so okay, we rambled so on enough. The big let's, band, let's... the big band and swing stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I I can't wait. I have it in my notes. I'll bring it back up. 
that particular week this summer when I was in Sweetwater with you. Uh, we'll talk about that in the future, but uh, that's uh, kind of what's hit hitting right then. Yeah, that big band, that big band mm-hmm. sound. So, yeah. um, with that being said, <clears throat> big band sound. That that's a perfect segue into the question. Do you have the uh, magazine open? And if you do, where are we going for number ninety six? Well, I'll tell you before we do that. Before I before we talk about ninety six, we got to finish and we got to rate Cecile. Oh boy, uh, you ready to do that? Do, do you have that open, by the way? I do. I do. I have because I, I, have the I updated open. mine this morning. I okay. didn't have it up there uh, prior to that, and I don't have it actually in my. Okay, I, I don't I have see it in my little diary book. Yeah, I. You know that's funny because this part of our journey. Uh, when we first started 10 months ago, we, we didn't keep extensive notes. And I thought, I think we were just kind of talking back and forth and uh, enjoying the, the, the start of the journey and, and learning along the way. I, I'm not even sure we wrote down our ratings back then. So uh, yeah. I'm going to put the ratings list up on the unconnoisseur.com website. You'll see, um, you'll see the weeks that we have discussed in the past and, and the current week that we are discussing. You'll see those scores, but you won't see scores uh, beyond that week. Um, I don't want to give too much away uh, too soon on the website. So um, I'll tell you, I put my score in this morning as well. Um, okay. And uh, I'll tell you my score, and then you, you want me to tell you your score? Yeah, yeah, you'll have to tell me that. I'm actually going to put it into the book now okay. so that I have those for the future handwritten. All right. So, I, all right, so this is this was 97, Cecile McLaurin Savant. This yep. album was from 2013. It was called Woman Child. Uh, yep. And it was uh, Mac Avenue. It was released yep. CDLP. So, yep. your personal opinion? What my did score, you rate this? My score was a solid eight. Okay. Um, again, being the jazz vocal isn't uh, vocal jazz isn't our isn't our jam. You know, I think uh, anything five and below, I don't ever care to listen to again. If you know, and and anything above the mid range five. Uh, is good. I'm not going to turn it off if it comes on, and I definitely um, would maybe come back and pick it uh, again uh, if I if I'm in the mood. So I think I think an eight on, on my scale is is really good, and you gave Cecile an eight point five this morning. So I did. Um, yeah. I hadn't written it down, and so I think that if I'm honest, I would have probably put it at a seven five back in that month. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't the highlight. I think why I wrote the note that my favorite album was the window, which is what she had released in 2018. I probably sourced through those, uh, those songs, the albums to listen to it. So I think that by writing that note personally, I was probably digging for some inspiration on her music. So I probably would have been seven, five. I had to go eight five this week because I got to go back and really listen to uh, her album with a new, fresh uh, mind, if you will. Many weeks later, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty well, good with that. Again, we didn't know what we didn't know then, right? And and bro, if I'm honest, we still don't know anything about jazz music. <laughs> I mean, come on, we're halfway through a hundred top albums and. It, it's a note to myself listening to an album, a new one last night from a, a young lady who had passed away a couple years ago. I don't know anything other than the top 100. Right. And and I think that when we venture out to the newer albums, and I think you're going to do that over on TikTok, the things you're listening to, the things that you've been uh, enveloped by, I'm going to do that on Instagram and talk about new artists. We don't know anything. Right. about jazz music and we're coming into this as unconnoisseurs and it's so cool to me to to be on this journey and i think that when we went back to the beginning weeks it was a simple phone call on tuesday morning it, i don't yeah. i don't think we got scheduled on tuesday until weeks after that but it was a conversation about yeah what do you think did you listen to it did you care to listen to it a second time or, or did you just move on to your normal standard music? And right. and I think that that's probably why I didn't have some of those written. But we're we're learning about well, what jazz music is. Let me let me keep going on that thought, and I'll tell you a quick story. I, I ran into uh, to an inspiration of mine on Friday afternoon. 
and uh, I was telling him about the journey that we're on, and and I I made the comment, uh, <laughs> and I made the comment that when I have jazz music in my ears, my brain just explodes. It just it's just going, and I I can. I, I can either concentrate if I need to concentrate or let my mind wander and think about what I need to concentrate on. Or I can just literally just zone out. But but my brain, there, there, there's synapses firing in my brain that, that don't normally fire when I've got jazz music in my ear. And he he smiled big and shook his head and he said, yeah, just, just wait, it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. So, and... Uh, not going to get too much away, but uh, I hope to have that person on as a special guest sometime in the future on, on our show. So. It's interesting as I, uh, the, the brain does start firing different mm -hmm. when you've got jazz music on. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that we will find that more and more as the weeks grow. Hopefully that you who take the time to listen to us ramble on about jazz music have taken this serious and listened to the albums. I hope that you find that happens as well. The brain starts to fire a little bit differently when you're trying to connect the dots of the music playing, the album that's in the background. What are they doing creatively in this Im improvisation stuff or in the solos or in the big band sound? Something begins to happen mentally. And I think that's a, a big deal. Uh, that's what I found recently. Um, and, and I know that you do it as well. When you've got a task, task to accomplish, you'll put on a particular uh, album. It's the mm -hmm. same thing I do. I needed to get yeah. some serious work done around the house this week because of an incident. I needed about an hour and a half of pure adrenaline driving music. Now I turned to a different album right off the bat, but Sons of Kemet then was one of those driving sounds because I know them. But that high energy, there are times when you need focal uh, and, and to focus on a project you got to get done. So it does, it does fire. I'm curious to hear who that will be. And, and I'm cu more curious when we get to interview people, uh, right. for their particular skill set, uh, and, both as musicians, when we start getting comments on the website, you know, or on the oh, YouTube man. channel, feel free to comment, you know, how you felt about Cecile or, or Kamazi for that matter, you know, um, please, we want to hear from you as well. How, how how the synapses are firing for you when you've got jazz and, on. and if you do want to fight Matt over the uh, Harmony of Difference be it a Christmas album <laughs> drop a link below and we'll uh, schedule that boxing match uh, if it gets into heavyweight I'll cover that in <laughs> I got a broken nose for a reason yeah. see you can hit me right there <laughs> <laughs> we might straighten it um, okay. no, I, I think that was well, good so yeah. um, well, you see you want to talk about number 96, this week album coming up? We'll, we'll mention this. So it's number 96 coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. I've turned the page. I've, I've looked at 96 for the first time, or pretending to. It's the right. Mike Westbrook Concert Band. The album is Celebration. Uh, DRAM is the uh, record uh, company. It was released on an LP and a CD. I have not been able to find for sale an LP or a CD unless I get it from uh, the UK. Mm -hmm. I did find again this morning that one of the uh, tracks, I think there are three tracks online actually that you can pick up. Do you have it on iTunes Music? I do not. So um, Celebration is going to be one of those ones where it's going to, it's, gonna be hard uh to list to do you remember what we did uh, this week do you remember so four i found uh in my white my mike westbrook concert band notes celebration 1976 uh i don't want to give all my information away but i had a uh, couple of extra notes in there okay. i did find several uh of the songs uh on youtube as uh, videos. Uh, okay. Basically, the video is just a, a picture of the album cover. I think that we ended up with This Week and Next going to more of the more recent stuff uh, instead of focusing on uh, that particular album. Uh, we, uh, what my note said is we listened to what we could. 
yes. of Mike Westbrook concert band. Um, my my note about it was that concert bands seemed to be fun and spontaneous. Artists from early years formed another band that we had listened to called Loose Tubes. And so I, I think that looking at that, we, we scrambled to find his stuff online. Um, it was a, an album LP originally in 1967. So if, uh, if you can, like Loose Tubes, we found that album in, uh, in the UK and had to have it shipped. It might be a hard one to listen to. So when we come to rate this, it'll be an interesting, an interesting album to rate. Well, well, uh, let's just, let's just put it out there. Uh, if you're watching, you know, the show <laughs> anytime close to what we're, what we're putting it out. And if, if you got a copy of Mike Westbrook's concert band, uh, album, <clears throat> it's called celebration, man, let us know. Cause, uh, like Drew said, <clears throat> we listened to what we could find. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, if you've got a copy or you know where we can get a copy, please. Leave and us I, a comment. I found this morning iTunes Music had some sample, like one minute long samples of that every song on that particular album. I think that's where I found it. It'll be an interesting album to say the least. Yeah, we're we're ahead of the recording of these uh, conversations. This week's and next week's, I think that we had in our list that will be difficult to find. Uh, we're not going to say what next week's is, but or but two weeks from now. But uh, celebration, the Mike Westbrook concert band is next week. Yep. Um, as if we did just flip the page, there's not many names that stand out as far as who the saxophone players are or the drum players, uh, other than it was recorded the 29th of July and the 5th of August, 1967. Um, and if you've got the magazine from Jazzwise Publications, Top 100 Albums That Shook the World, you'll be on page 8, number 96. Uh, you can read about it, and we'll read about it next week and we'll kind of recap what the uh, paragraph says. Um, yeah, this ought to be a fun week in music because I think we yeah. just commented on the big band sound. And mm -hmm. uh, from the number of players on this, alto sax, piano, alto sax, and uh, flute, berry sax, soprano sax, and bass clarinet. Tuba. Uh, oh, John Sherman. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Chambers on tenor sax, clarinet. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of sound coming out of this. Oh, John Sermon. Oh. Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, you'll have to tune in next week to hear more about the Mike Westbrook concert band. You ready to wrap up? I think I am. All right. Absolutely. So hey, have uh, a good week, everyone. Join us again next week when we talk about number 96. Absolutely. Cheers, everybody. We'll see Cheers. You. Thanks for joining us.